Hi guys, it's Inoza Art, or just Inno. As promised, today I'll be explaining my process and a few tips and tricks in painting or rendering hair. Today I won't really be going over the anatomy of hair. Honest to God, I go with vibe and references found on Pinterest in my like art wall, art gallery. Rather, I'll be in this video. I'll be focusing on perhaps like a different method of doing hair than what you're used to with such like line art. And giving you some options to test it out on your own. Furthermore, today's video has been graciously sponsored by the art program that I've been using since 2019, uh, Clip Studio Paint. Personally, I would always, always recommend this program as a startup from uh, free applications such as Krita, Fire Alpaca, or Medibang. I actually started with Medibang from 2017 to 2018 and eventually moved to Clip Studio Paint pretty easily with similar formats and um, like settings that you have on both programs. Personally, the learning curve is much less from Medibang to Clip Studio Paint in comparison to Photoshop, which is another common art program I know lots of people use. I don't do much with um, Clip Studio Paint other than use the basic features such as brushes, blending modes, and different adjustments because all I do is really illustrations. However, I cannot talk about my experience with this program without mentioning the amazing asset store where I get almost all my brushes and 3D models for items such as SHIP, uh, which you can see right now on, the, uh, on my screen, SHOES, because I still have not learned how to draw them, and of course, for my neutral B, GUN. Because who knows when you need to draw a gun in I don't know, dramatic settings. Anyway, many of these like 3D assets are free and provided by the Clip Studio Paint um, community. And like on the asset store, the models that you purchase don't even cost more than ten dollars. Plus, there's like a whole bunch more like features you use for comics and animations that are done pretty easily in like the upgraded version, which I'll link some videos explaining in depth. Um, in the description since I, I'm not a comic artist or someone who does animations, but I do know they have these. Once again, thank you to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video and let's get right to it. So with hair structure, as you've probably heard numerous times on the internet, I'll go over a crash course on the types of hair which will be seen in the background as I'm drawing them. In short, type 1 hair is typically dead straight and less textured in comparison to the other hairs. Type 2 is wavier than type 1 but not as curly as type 3. But I typically draw these two ha hair types similarly because I don't really draw enough curly haired people. I need to widen my breadth, but yeah. Type 4 is much more textured with tightly packed curls in comparison to type 3 that tend to move as bundles rather than typical um, like strands of hair. Uh, the, typically in type 4 you can either see um, it being put into locks or in its natural state which is a lot more uh, floofier and looks more like a cloud. The key to making your life easy with painting hair is getting a solid base down of the shape rather than focusing on the details. So looking at the silhouette at first. This is going to sound super obvious but go from big to small. So firstly, with one type 1 hair, type 1 ABC, in the, like as you can see on the screen, in the generic K-pop boy bowl cuts, I try to liven it up by adding a few strands here and there. You can also see here that I've been using the big, medium, small rule to give you the diversity but keep the balance in the hair. So like not just to break it up from just straight cuts. You want to have a big clump, a medium clump, and a small one. And that's how you get nicer looking hair shapes. This is also applied in the haircut or the hairstyle to the right, where it's just dead straight uh, cuts. Instead of it being cut straight fully coloured, I at fringe I've added sparse cuts varying in forehead reveal. I don't know if that sentence makes sense, but you can see the little yeah, the cuts in, in between the fringe. This gives again extra dimension to the shape. I'm applying the same structure with the much shorter hair and the strands to make sure it doesn't look too flat. And here we also see my lack of experience in painting braids. We'll move on. With type 2 hair, think of hair like tapered ribbons softly rolled, like they were just unrolled and it's been a few hours and so some of the coil has left, but there's still a bit of spring in their step. 
for both the asymmetric and symmetric look from left to right respectively. Make sure the curls go in opposite direction to keep the balance and make sure the face isn't like weighed heavily on one side. See like um, I'll put two images of what I've drawn before with curls facing opposite each other and facing the same direction. Can you also, see, the difference is kind of, yeah, you can see how it weighs on one, one side. Um, can you also spot the big, medium, small use? Medium size left bang, right, larger size right bang, and small strands at the bottom hang. This is what we like, shape diversity. Type three hair, similarly to two ABC, think of tape and ribbons, but now a lot tighter and you just finished curling them. So, um, I'll just quickly show this video of me drawing the ribbons. If you don't know how to draw ribbons, here's a quick crash course. You do a little spiral and then you put a little line in between spirals and draw another spiral. You, you can see what's going on on the screen. So if you can draw ribbons in perspective, you can probably draw some curling hair to an extent. Like I'm making the hair a lot more like free flowing as in there's more that's loose in comparison to true ABC and you see more of the flyaways to emphasize the curls. Moving on to type 4 ABC hair, instead of the tapered edge that you saw from types 1 to 3 hair, you want to typically think more like cloudier clumps for type 4, it's really sim um, as you're dealing with a lot more textured hair and especially when you're drawing like locks. Pressing in and out of the pressure for the pen while doing the lock strands is key to achieving that textured look where it's just bumps in between. However, if you're looking at the shape of hair that's like natural without any braiding, um, just use a softer round brush in circular motions to outline uh, what should make the correct silhouette. Definitely keep using those Pinterest references and searching up and um, constantly comparing like real life hair to what you're drawing as um, to make sure you're getting the right shapes and the right textures. You can see I'm also lining the edges with like smaller circular motions to show flyaways. 4ABC hair typically has more gravity defined techniques which makes for a very creative field of hairstyles that you can do. Now on to both the best and worst part, colouring our silhouettes of hair. It both brings to life the shapes and is a pain to do. So first of all, on screen are all of the brushes and tools that I typically use for hair. They're used right next to the label. All the links for the brushes are in the description. Otherwise, the tools that I use are just inbuilt in Clipsio Paint um, itself. So the gradient tool, blending tool, and airbrush. First, I have my hair shape ready, and I then fill it in with the base color of my choice with the fill tool. I go in with the round brush and roughly sketch in the major shadows that you see here. Right after, I go in with a gradient or an airbrush with a purplish grey colour, which is kind of the opposite of red, the, like the reddish brown, except it's not and it's actually just the colour next to it, which you can see on the colour wheel that I've put on screen. This is a personal preference, but I do, do like having that purple undertone coming through so that the brown isn't just straight brown. I add in the highlights with a greyish yellow green to add more colour variation in the drawing. In isolation, you'd think usually like the green and the brown would clash, but if you have the whole head with varying hues, it will turn out looking somewhat good if you just blend enough colours together. If you've also noticed, I've been using colours directly to the right and left of the brown and red base, so to further to the yellow, I've been using that for highlights, and further to the blue, I've been using it as shadows. I don't know what that's exactly called, but this works well for brown hair colouring specifically, and I always use it, um, as you can see in my examples. I go in with the shadow and highlights in a zigzag shape and blend it out slightly into the hair to make it look a bit more natural and less jarring with the straight lines. I'll speed up the video from here, but you can see that I'm constantly using that same zigzag shape for both highlights and shadows. This is applicable to all hair types except when it's type 4 in colouring due to the difference in textures, as you'll see. In the actual demonstration of the hair shape, um, I'm just going to show you for type 1, 2-ish hair, which I have a habit of drawing a lot of. Um, I always try to make the major shadow or highlight first. So for shorter hair, I make the top entirely that yellow, green, grey shade 
and contrast it with the shadow of the hair lifted up. Within the shadow, I purposely put a color slightly darker than the highlight to shade in that area alone and provide some of the dimension in there. As a final step, adding in strands always works well in hiding your inability to consistently draw good hair. One more tip before I switch into final drawing of all the hair types, I like lining the shadows of hair, clothing and everything with a darker tone to the shadow. So maybe that sentence didn't make sense, but see here um, on this pink hair, it looks nicer, doesn't it? I guess, to maybe it's personal preference, but for like this style of drawing or painting, it, it looks a bit more cleaner, I guess. Anyhow, ahead of time, I've also prepared four ball children to experiment on. Choosing the right colour to match skin tone is equally as important as choose, um, to choose the right colours for your hair. Whilst you can paint any hair colour desired onto the skin, you just need to make sure the undertones of the hair matches the skin and that's why it prevents a clash in like the shades for the character. So firstly, with the type 1 white hair, I use a green-blue shadow base to match like the bluish shadows on the neck of this character. On the edges of the shadows, I line it with yellow because I actually don't know. Like, you see it, you see it on other art and I apply it onto mine, but it looks good so I do it still. As white, like as it's a very light hair colour, it's literally white, you don't really have any options for adding highlights. Thus, I decide I just add like fainter shadows instead to emphasize the lightness and use it as like the highlight to go from dark to light. You'll see this is the exact opposite method that I use for dark hair seen in type 4. So for the pink head color with I I guess type 3 hair, I kind of struggled and I'm not too proud of how this turned out, but the main principles still stand. So I'm always making sure I have a major dark shadow that I'm following and then I move on to the lighter ones and in the darker shadows I will match the skin undertones with a cooler blue, but I personally think I overdid the blue a little bit here, but it's always making sure I match the energy of the skin with the energy of the hair. It's the same vibes. And now for the type 2 blue hair at the bottom, I used a dark mid blue and green tone, it's like a cyan, which fits the more yellow complexion of the character better. This as yellow and blue are obviously like complementary on the colour wheel. They always look really good together in the right tones. So, or shades, I don't actually, I think I got it wrong, that's right. Um, and so, with the yellow complexion, it makes the yellow highlights of the hair that we use blend in a lot better with the overall look. And it just looks much more natural in comparison to like, if I put just straight up green in the pink hair. I added in some fun warm, warmer pink colours after experimenting a bit on the highlights to just vary up the colour. A lot of this, the supposed colour theory that I attempt to apply is just experimentation on what colors kind of look good together so don't be afraid to just shove some colors in and blend it a bit with the blending tool and hope it looks good because a lot of it is just it's just guesswork for me i think i should study color theory a bit more but yes moving on with type 4 hair as i'm painting locks um, which is pulled back into like a bun i'm making sure to have these distinctions between the locks with the highlights being broken up some like by some shadow because it's darker hair I'm making sure that the highlights or the lighter parts are the main like the main distinction um, to show the shape of the hair so I've written I've drawn it out like this and then broken it up with shadows that I put in and again this is the exact opposite of going from dark to light instead of going to light to dark in this case it's better to simplify the shadows and focus more on the highlights as we're working with darker tones. Once again, with the sh with a cyan shadow undertone um, of the skin, I apply the same into the hair. And just to break up like the darker colors, I added in some gold um, rings, hair rings into it. I think it looks nice, but 
um, this yeah this is my process for basically all four hair types so that's basically it for me I hope I didn't rush too much through this tutorial and if I did I'm more than happy to answer questions about it down below apologies again for the kind of shitty audio but it is a little late right now and I don't really want to wake, wake my parents up once more I'd like to thank Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video I'm so grateful for that <laughs> this opportunity using this program is like second nature to me as I've gotten so comfortable with its shortcuts and functions ever since I got it in like 2019 I would definitely implore those who are looking for maybe like an upgrade from those mentioned free applications to invest 70 AUD which I also believe is like 40 or 50 USD into this art program. Like even even without the sponsorship, I've always I'm always very pro purchasing something like this. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped in some shape or form. And if you did enjoy, maybe give a like, perhaps subscribe. I'm always open to making more tutorials, though the colour theory one that I promised. But I have to be postponed until I can differentiate between tone, hue and shade. Anyway, always have a good one. Bye-bye.